Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us for UNLV Arts Worldwide. UNLV Arts Worldwide. UNLV Arts. UNLV Arts. UNLV Arts. UNLV Arts Worldwide. Made possible by the Student Harriet Lipoff Technology Fund. This is UNLV Arts Worldwide, and we are excited for this series, and we're excited for this episode, Spotlight on the Barrick Museum of Art. And here's our Dean, Dean Nancy Escher. Hi, Nancy. Lewis, it's always a pleasure to be here with you. It's always. And today, <laughs> we have fun. Today, we're excited to welcome our audience into our wonderful Barrick Museum of Art in the College of Fine Arts at UNLV, and it currently is the only art museum in Las Vegas and the region. We are so proud. And, and Louis, one of the things that we, we talked to Alicia Curlin about, Alicia is the executive director of the museum, is what a welcoming space this museum is. She talked about exhibitions and beautiful plans for the future, but my takeaway or how I perceive, how I experience the museum, is when I walk in, I feel welcome. And I think everyone does. Yeah. And all ages, she has educational activities, uh, activities for other colleges at the university, obviously the community. She brings people together. And she's so inventive about partnerships and collaborations. And I know that you yourself have been part of them, Lewis. Do you want to t talk about that a little bit? Oh, uh, of course. I, I love to sing the praises of the Barrack because um, it's such an oasis, and we're lucky as a college to have the Barrick Museum um, within um, our college. It's, and Alicia is just, her energy is infectious. It, uh, she, she creates that environment and has assembled a really top-notch staff, and they are so inviting. We've done amazing collaborations, and she's reached into all of the areas of the performance arts and architecture and the visual arts and... Uh, amazing things are done. So it's been fantastic. Lewis, one thing that you discussed with Alicia in the interview uh, is about how they, how the museum has actually been a bridge to another part of the state. Would you like to mention about something about that? Sure. I, I've just enjoyed Alicia's vision for bridging the various departments so that there are opportunities for performances and collaborations in the barrack. And I'm just so touched that now that bridge is extending further. It's probably the longest bridge in Nevada is we're going from <laughs> the north to the south. And the two museums, the Lilly Museum in the north and the Barrack Museum have partnered together for a duet series where works of art come together and um, we can see and experience both collections. So that's been, that was so exciting. Lewis, so many times during this series, we've said that the arts are not optional, they're essential, that artists are essential workers. And you know, this is another example of, you know, art bringing our state together uh, and only good things can happen from that. And uh, we've already, you and I have already been chatting about imagining the future and building on this. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more at another, another time. But I, I'm excited for this episode. And um, just, I think it's gonna be inspiring for our audience. Yeah, we have some great clips and great segments and it's, it's exciting to spotlight the Barrick Museum of Art. At the Barrick, we believe everyone deserves access to the arts. We invite you to join us on a virtual tour of our show, Excerpts, works from the Marjorie Barrick Museum of Art Collections. Welcome everyone to our wonderful interview uh, in our episode, The Spotlight on the Barrick Museum of Art. Uh, and here we are with our interview uh, featuring Alicia Curlin, who is the executive director of the Barrett Museum of Art at UNLV. And I might say, before we begin, that this museum is the only museum at the present time in Las Vegas. We are so proud uh, that this museum is at the university and serves the, serves the public and serves our community so richly. Uh, Alicia, welcome. Thank welcome, you so much. Alicia. I'm so excited to be talking to both of you. Hi, Lewis. Hi, Nancy. Hi. So Alicia, the, the Barrick Museum has persevered during the pandemic time with virtual shows and lots of offerings. Um, now you're open again. Tell us about the exhibits that are currently on um, focus at the Barrick. 
So we have opened the museum. We've reduced our hours to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, 10 to four. Um, as always, the museum is free to enter. We do require that you make an appointment to visit. It's just one thing. Um, and you, if you don't make an appointment, you show up, you just check in um, at the front desk. And we've changed a few things. We have some amazing shows right now. Um, you can come to the museum and see four shows. Um, so maybe I'll start. Is that okay? <laughs> okay. Tell us about the show. Uh, <laughs> so um, right now we have um, Kept to Myself, which is an exhibition, a solo exhibition by Ashley Dowdy. Um, she is a professor in graphic design. She runs the graphic design program within the Department of Art, and we're so lucky to have this show up right now. Um, if you walk in, you'll see um, poetry, um, writing as tall as the walls, 10 feet tall. It's very colorful. There's textiles, video, sculpture, um, and more. Um, her show deals with uh, personal um, thoughts about what it's like to be um, a woman in contemporary society, specifically a black woman in contemporary society. Um, you see, uh, you hear a lot from her own voice and you also see displayed um, words that have also been said at her. Doty is a visual storyteller whose practice engages with socio-economic, racial and gender-based issues, particularly those relating to cultural misconceptions and the development of personal identity. Kept to Myself introduces us to a substantial range of her work in different media, including video, fiber art, and illustration. Augmenting the exhibition space with her personal poems, written thoughts, and anecdotes, Doty uses art and text to lead us through her experiences as a black woman in contemporary society. Feeling the weight of others' expectations, she remembers a surprising proclamation of solidarity and considers the morality of bringing a child into a world where people are shot for praying, while black, while Jewish, while Muslim. And natural disasters get stronger, bolder, more devastating. Through printed textiles, she shares her discomfort at the unsolicited comments she receives from people in the street. How you doing on this fine day? A purple cushion croons. Working through a rush of impressions, the artist gives us a glimpse of her life that touches on both her interior individuality and her presence as part of a greater whole. The second show that we have um, up is um, excerpts. It's, it's um, selections from all three collections that we hold at the Barrack Museum. It's the first time we brought everything together. You can see again, sculpture, video, neon, painting um, a little bit of everything. And some of these pieces you've seen before in a different context, and some of these are brand new acquisitions. So we're really happy to show those off. Um, in addition to that, we have um, the Nevada Arts Council show um, called Still Here Now, and that has been traveling all around Nevada um, in rural cities and has landed here in our workshop gallery um, and will be up through November 9th. Um, it's a wonderful partnership with the Nevada Arts Council. We're really happy to do that. A little bit of a tease in the future, we'll, we'll tour our own uh, collection through Nevada. So it's a great way to bridge everything. Still Here Now features nine artists who are recipients of the Nevada Arts Council Artist Fellowship Program. The pieces in the show often reference or portray landscape and place, but their stories don't reside there. Beyond the depiction of land and nature, the presence of people is paramount. Bodies, psyches, and emotional connections inhabit the forefront of examination for the artists. The experience of landscape is only as important as our own fixed experience in space. These nine artists reflect on notions of rootedness, permanence, anxiety, and survival in their work. The selected works reflect the deep breadth of artist expertise supported by the Nevada Arts Council Fellowship Grants. Hands, bodies, and faces permeate the pieces in this show, never entirely abstracted, yet never completely revealed. Each artist demonstrates a commitment to the investigation of their given medium, be it textile, paint, wood, or found objects as their work presents a perspective on the psyche and anxiety of being human. 
still here now provokes thought on art, our bodies, the environment, and our uneasy place within this paradigm. Exhibition artists include Linda Alterwitz, Chris Bowder, Aaron Hertel, Darren Johnson, Orlando Javier Montenegro Cruz, Elaine Parks, Robin Stark, and Brent Sommerhauser. Um, and the last show that I can tell you a little bit about is Gulch, uh, curated an exhibition um, titled Future Relics, Artifacts for a New World. And it, it is highlighting the work of contemporary Latinx and indigenous artists. There's a giant mural on the wall, um, beautiful pieces that tell personal stories um, about, about um, the real lives right now of uh, artists living in Las Vegas. It's a lot going on. <laughs> so much going on. And always, you know, the, the barrack is such an oasis. You know, it's, um, I always count on it as just a place when I'm walking across campus to, to just, you know, what well, used to be you could just pop in and you would just have an art experience on the spot. So how wonderful to have four shows at one moment that one can encounter. Yeah, so Alicia, I want to say it's such an educational opportunity for our society, for our community. Uh, and uh, for people of all ages, uh, I know that you had a number of projects going on for uh, K-12 and you have Busted the Barrack and we've talked about that before, I think, in the series. But, you know, everything you describe uh, helps elevate all of us. You know, we learn and we dream and we imagine, you know, it brings out our creativity. Thank you for what you do. Thank you so much, and, and it's, we're not doing this alone. Um, I'm excited to announce several partnerships that we've launched, launched through the pandemic here, the shutdown. Um, it's really interesting that we seem to be hitting our stride right in the middle of the time that we're living now. Um, and we wouldn't be able to do that without opening up even further. Um, we have partnered with the Las Vegas Women of Color Arts Festival and like I mentioned before, Gulch, um, which is an intersectional group that highlights the work of Latinx and intersectional uh, and indigenous uh, artists. That's now, beautiful. There's also the duet series. I've oh. really enjoyed, um, enjoyed encountering that on the Instagram feeds where, uh, tell us about that because you're pairing in a duet, which is a, a fantastic dance term um, <laughs> and musical term also, but in musical a duet, as well. musical <laughs> also, yes, um, that you're pairing two works from our museum and um, our sister museum in the North. Yes, you know, um, as an academic museum in Nevada, we, we wanted to uh, create a bridge and um, when we shut down, we reached out to uh, Vivian at the Lily at uh, UNR, and we were sharing ideas, you know, what is happening um, in Reno, what is happening in Las Vegas, what kind of solutions do you have? And we started to talk about a partnership. Um, and that, you know, how do you get to know your sister, we say sister museum, um, how do you get to know your sister museum? Well, you get to know the museum through the collection. And so um, while we were doing that, we're developing an online um, collection database. So you can see everything in the, the museum's collection online. So we're developing that, we're sharing that with the Lily. And then every Friday we take a work from their collection, a work from ours, and we post those together with some beautiful <laughs> writing. Um, it's a collaboration. I have to say that um, the writing is um, predominantly written by DK Soul, but it has also opened up to our volunteers, interns, and students to write as well. So it's a great way for them to do um, many, like many curations. So it's really nice. Yeah, and we'll do a catalog soon. And then our hope is that this will continue. Um, and it has, we were only going to do it for the summer and it just keeps going. But, you know, what would it look like if um, the Lily would send their works down to the barrack for an exhibition, exhibition and vice versa? So beautiful. <laughs> um, you know, for art to create the bridge in our state between North and South, it, it really couldn't be better. It's, and, you know, the idea of that duet, speaking of creativity, is unbelievably innovative, imaginative, 
and it will have impact. I know that. Uh, so congratulations. Thank you so much. And, you know, it, it's been so wonderful to, to think of, think creatively about ways to be relevant during this time. Um, the museum really cares about um, providing access to art. And when people couldn't visit the museum during the shutdown, we still wanted to fulfill our mission. And this was one of the ways. But we learned that um, these things should should keep on going. You know, as long as we have the bandwidth and, and desire and the, the joy from it, we just, we keep doing these these collaborations. Yeah, how, how great when the collaboration just continues. And then, you know, with this, even this dream of, you know, a shared exhibit that travels from the north to the south so that the two collections physically come together um, and make that bridge. That's just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. You, you know, Alicia, in addition to this being um, an exuberant space for learning and, uh, you know, enjoying and celebrating art, you've been so successful in inviting, generously inviting colleagues into that space. And I know Lewis right here is uh, someone who has uh, really enjoyed, and I've enjoyed as an observer, seeing projects like the one with masks that you did several years ago. And last year, a research project on art and neuroscience. And Lewis was one of the presenters in that series as well. And I, I want to say that um, there's a kind of a warmth uh, when you come into that space. Uh, there's a warmth and a kind of inviting, uh, inviting people to become part of that. And the way, I just want to say, the way you invite colleagues and partnerships into the museum gives us another view about the role of the museum in society. And I appreciate that very much. Thank you. That means a lot to us. Um, we want to provide that um, positive experience. Um, we our, our audience is okay, like the, the college students, say English 101 to the seniors, the PhDs, the graduate students, but it's also um, K through 12 and the community and tourists coming in into the city. So um, we always want to provide a welcoming experience, no matter what your experience with museums are. And we hope that it's a a positive one. Um, so that's one that's at the core of our mission to be welcoming. That means a lot to to hear that. And Lewis, when we collaborated, it was a it was a matter of um, getting coffee and and saying, well, what what if what if we what did if, this? Yeah, Nancy, I have to tell a story because um, I, I, I invited Alicia because we had talked about bringing some dance to the museum and, and doing an event someday. So I also had a had the collection of the Hawkins masks. So one day over coffee, I just invited Alicia and said, let's get coffee, let's look at some masks. And immediately, uh, and I said, oh, it would be fantastic if one day we did a performance at the Barrack. And Alicia said, well, what are you doing in two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we immediately planned, um, she immediately planned a performance event in the barrack, which was highly successful and fun and, and the beginning of so many other things and so much other dance that has occurred in that space. So it, 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 is, more than, it is more than welcoming. It's almost a, a Pied Piper place for bringing <laughs> artists together um, to create work and show. You know, it, you know, I loved that. I still remember it vividly. And it's such a great uh, experience for our students to see how how rich, I, I said that word before, but how rich and exuberant collaboration can be. Because we've said this before in our series, I think that our students are going to be, uh, you know, collaborating with, with people they meet here at UNLV and other colleagues that they meet throughout their life. I mean, people work together in the arts uh, and and in many other disciplines, and uh, it's great for them to see how how fun and and extraordinary these these opportunities, these projects can be. So I was delighted to see our students always be involved in, in these in these opportunities. And it's it's been I know it's been fun for me and also Alicia that when a student when a dancer responds to a painting, you know that that we have a, a, a subject. And, and the world of a subject, the colors, but then we bring the, the colors of the movement of the dancer. When those things come together, it, it creates a kind of magic in the collaboration. Um, almost a third thing comes out between the two, the, the duet. 
-hmm. It's great. The, the conversations that happen with the students as well, they're having to think about the intention of a visual artist, think about their own, the own meaning that they pull from that artwork and then have to translate it over a, a, a seemingly vast gap and make something new out of it. And it's really, it's lovely to see them, them work together and collaborate. Um, we, we host a lot of internships here at the museum. Um, and my favorite, I, I can't pick favorites, but I've really enjoyed working with those, um, those students who are say from history or philosophy or writing, um, dance, you know, we, we love to talk to them and try to make this like this gap kind of close a little bit and make something new out of it. And to see their writing and their experimental curations, it has been, it's, it's so amazing. I love it. Um, e even the, the bus to the barrack has been just another opportunity for my students to dance, you know, and, and showcase work with, with, with kids who are just first coming to a museum and starting, starting that part of their lives where they realize a, a museum is a place to go and to discover. So that's been exciting. It's fun. We, we haven't been doing the tours um, this year because of course they, they, they aren't even going to school. So a field trip is not possible, but we have had um, people make appointments to come and get, you know, get out of the house, you know, safely with masks and social distancing and be in person with artwork, which is very different than, than on the screen. We can do some really fabulous things, but to be there in the presence of a piece and taking your own time and walking through the space is just entirely different. Um, we're really excited to, to do the bus to barrack, the physical field trips. Until then, it's virtual tours and videos, educational materials that we can send to the teachers uh, to continue that partnership. And I can tell you a little bit about Amanda, maybe that would be a good oh, segue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Amanda Pingboda Hipaki is a, a neuroscientist turned the artist designer. And we had a, a big exhibition of hers right before um, we closed for install and the pandemic came along. Um, and we had at any one time, there was 50 middle school girls coming through the museum to learn about science in an art museum. Um, and after they, they viewed the art museum, they would, they would look through tiny microscopes and share their discoveries. Um, and, and then go to a movie theater after that to see a film. So um, for me, it was a, a very natural collaboration with the sciences um, to, to like, again, you know, find out, find out what you could be curious about, talk about what can't be seen, what is the unknown, um, and then be creative around, around that conversation. Um, and we partnered too with the dance students in that show, so it's wonderful. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so many bridges, so many bridges. Well, listen, it's been so great to have you here today, Alicia. Is there anything that we didn't discuss that you'd like to, um, to add to our conversation? We always ask our guests that question. Yeah, I, would, I would just say that if, um, if, you're, if you're interested in coming to the museum, we're very, uh, we're fan, very friendly group. If you have any questions, say about something as simple as parking um, or ways in which you can collaborate with the museum or get involved, um, we, you can just send us an email. You can reach out to us at any time. Again, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 to 4. And um, after one on Friday, parking is free on campus and very available. So please, please come by. It's been wonderful to, uh, you know, it's been exciting to share with our listeners, uh, you know, all the great things that go on at the Barrett Museum of Art. We are all so proud of the, in the College of Fine Arts and in the entire university and community and region and state uh, to have this museum and to have you uh, helping to lead its future. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I forgot to add. Ashley's show is up through October 16th. Yeah. We, we had right. um, such a positive response that we had to extend the show. We've learned that we need a <laughs> little bit more time for these exhibitions to be up. Two months is not enough. Um, so please come see this show in person um, through October 16th. And it is uh, what a, great a powerful show. So it, it, it is one yes. that needs to be seen. Yes. 
very, very thought provoking and really, really, uh, you know, deeply moving. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alicia. Thanks, Alicia. Can't wait to, to, to see you at the barrack. See you soon. Nancy, what a fantastic museum and what, what, a, what a wonderful thing to highlight in an episode, the Barrick Museum of Art. You know, it really, um, it really underscores the importance of a museum in society and how, as you say, how fortunate we are to have this museum and how much good it does for the people who have a chance to go in and spend time with the exhibitions uh, in a mad, you know, it opens up imagination. Uh, and it opens up possibility. So many times, Lewis, in this series, we've talked about that we live in a world of possibility, and that did not go away with the pandemic. No. We, we've talked about the importance of our students really feeling uh, optimistic about the possibilities in front of them and their lives. And I do think that going into a museum like the Barrett Museum of Art uh, can really help people feel optimistic, uh, that anything is possible, uh, that um, the art speaks to people in different ways, um, and that everyone has a right, has a chance and an opportunity and the right uh, to experience what art brings to them. Yeah, and I'm just amazed at the fact that the Barrick Museum, in the midst of a pandemic, they're hitting their stride. They're really reaching out and they're creating things that um, are the groundwork for future projects and future um, future growth. So um, the pandemic is such a, a a horrible time, and but in the midst of it, it's amazing to see artists and in art institutions flourish and grow and make a way. So how exciting! Nancy. So, so true, and it really becomes an element of a lifelong education that all human beings have a right to have. And I think we're so proud, you know, that we have this museum right on our campus and it's available to everyone, even during the pandemic, as Alicia told us, it's open limited hours, but it still is open physically. And then we're going to be, you know, we're, we know that we're going to be um, exhibiting online as well, but, but the physical opportunity is still there for people who want to go on Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays. So bravo to Alicia and her staff. Just yes. So good. And this is UNLV Arts Worldwide. We are reaching from Las Vegas to the world.